Alrighty, here we are in the oven, and let's have a look. Mm, nothing like baked triple tree. Well, hey folks, and uh, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I've got a little job that came in and uh, it's a former student of mine from about 10 years ago and he's got a motorcycle uh, triple tree here. Now when I first looked at this I thought that was aluminium, it was quite heavy but it's painted you know, frosty silver which uh, sort of gave me the al aluminium appearance. However with the old magnet test and uh, we can see that it's steel. So the problem here is that it's uh, machine, it's been, well, it's been pressed in and welded in here, okay? Now he wants this aluminium one placed in its, uh, or returned in its place. So we've got the top part of the headset here and that's an aluminium one and this is a steel one. So uh, I've already pulled the bearing off this one and packed it all up in a um, box of bits. So now I need to get the bearing off this one here. Okay, so I thought I was cheeky. I went and bought a bearing puller set the other day from Sydney Tools and it's quite cheap really for the, uh, for the bearing puller and bearing uh, application set it's roughly hundred nine dollars I thought it was too cheap to pass up so I bought it but unfortunately in my um, in my excitement to get this bearing off I'd forgotten that I actually had the stops here okay I'm not sure if you can see on camera there these stops here and there and this in the road so I'm gonna have to try the old tire lever method or something like that to get this off uh, one of the things that concerns me is getting this aluminium piece off this steel now I might heat this up in the oven and hopefully the wife won't catch me uh, using her brand new oven to do it and then come back in here and press it off in the vise by applying some pressure and uh, down the force here to get it off. Alright, so let's get started. Alrighty, so this one here guys, the, the um, tapered bearing came off rather easy with just two tyre levers and a little bit of pressure and push that off here. Um, this is... Um, this bearing here, this looks like a... Japanese NSK bearing, so we'll just see how hard that is. I've just got two tire levers here, and if I just gently try and get a bit of force under this, I might be able to get this up. But anyway, I've got sort of no area where I can really pry on this without it giving me grief. Try that again out here. Yeah, and that's not that is not budging at all. Well, some good news there. I just uh, turned the camera off for quickly and I just gave that another little nudge here, okay, with this um, old seed chrome uh, cold chisel, a uh, nice sharp point on it, and just came in on the side here and gave it a quick little crack. And it looks like I've cracked the bearing and it started to move, all right? So I might just give it another little crack here to try and sa save that bearing without damaging it. Uh, definitely moving. I know it's a little bit, uh, my brother didn't call me Humpty Dumpty Mechanical Company for nothing, that's for sure. So I've definitely got that on the move now. I might just have the old knocking around. Definitely on the move. Got it moving there. Haven't damaged the shaft at all. I'm just real careful. Now it's uh, hitting hard and steel with your cold chisels, pretty taxi on it, but that's okay. You can sharpen them later on the grinder. I'm not too worried about that. We might get a drift punch now and try and move that with a drift punch. Better still, I've got a old tie rod end remover here. So that I think, oh, is that going to hit? No, it's going to come through. Maybe not. You know, that's hitting the shaft. That'd be my luck. Fits here, but it doesn't fit over the bearing shaft. Now you see why they used to call me lightning. I never strike the same place twice. 
Alrighty, so I've got that bearing off. I have bruised it around here a little bit, so if you're reusing this part, you'd have to fix it. Oh, you know, or we'll file it down, that little bit of a, a, a nick there. So here there's a big chunk of weld. So what I need to do now is throw that in the lathe, face that off, and then hopefully I can try and press that shaft out. Now I've taken the hardware off this. Uh, there was a couple of bolts, because sure as hell, as luck would have it, one would fly out and strike me in the head. So took all the hardware off it, so there's no risk of it flying out and killing me. Um, I'll just give that a, lot, a little start up and just see how it looks. Just slow this lathe down a little bit. Now it'll be a little bit out of balance here, but we'll just see how it goes, all right? Make sure we don't, not gonna hit anything. A little bit of a wobble in the lathe, but it's not much, nothing to worry about. So now I'm gonna try and get in there to get at this part. Now I'll have to offset the tool post. And hopefully that won't strike anything. Just rotate the chuck by hand just to make sure I'm not going to smash it. And here we go. been set on about 200 degrees Celsius. Oh, here we go. A baked headset. How cool is that? Turn the oven off and get this out to the shop. All right, I've uh, got it in the vise, just pulled it hot out of the oven. It's still hot to touch. Uh, I've got this little drift here. Now it's pretty hard to hang on to it, so let's see if I can crack that with one hard hit. We have movement. And we're out. Hallelujah, thank God for that. That was a mongrel. A bit hot to touch still. You can see where I've uh, machined a little bit of a groove in there. To break that today, and there's the shaft out, and uh, you can see a little, little dag of weld still left on there. But I've cracked it, so I'm happy with that. Awesome, haven't damaged the shaft, no damage to the threads on the end, so this could be a success.
oven, it is absolutely red hot. Let's see if I can press it in. I don't have an arbor press or a press. Uh, move that over a little bit. No, it wants to go, but it's stuck. I have to give it a belt. Well, there you have it, uh, ladies and gents. Uh, that, that little job is done today. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself. I, I really wanted to bore that in the lathe, in, in the forge or chuck in, in the, uh, the old Colchester. However, in saying that, I put the forge or chuck on and do you think I could, there wasn't any good way of holding this. To, of course, this bore is so far off centre, it was going to clamp right on one of these corners and I just didn't trust it. And uh, being aluminium, it's already, um, it's been anodised. So I was really worried about marking the part and wrecking the part for young Rowan. So anyway, look, I'm happy with that. I've got it, I've got it in there. You can see the part, honestly, the part is hotter than Hades. I tell you, I've had it in the oven soaking for about 25 minutes and I had the oven on 220 degrees. Now, I gave it a bit of crush. So in the bore, um, that bore, the shaft is 28 millimetres. Now, instead of, uh, I wanted an interference fit. So to ensure that, guys, I put it in the CNC machine and I dialed it in in cam. So I drew a, I'll, I'll flash this up here to show you. So I just simply drew a rectangular block, placed the hole roughly where the offset was from the side of the part. And I didn't have to draw all this. All I, all I had to give it was the hole size, the rough size of it, and I picked the work coordinates uh, as the center of the bore. I popped down with a 2D boring cycle and I left half a mil clean up on the walls. Then I popped back in with that 12 mil and left 0.1 overall, okay? So I machined it out to 27.9, all right? And you saw it then, it wanted to go. This top of this shaft was a little bit thinner uh, than the bottom, the bearing section. And you saw me in the arbor, well, I didn't have an arbor press, you saw me in the pedestal drill. I got it started and then I couldn't push it any further. So I had to quickly run over to the vise and belt the bejesus out of it, uh, you know, with my al aluminum drift plug that I made up the end. And it's friggin' hot. I can hardly hang on to this now because the, the, he the heat has been transferred all the way down the shaft. Now, a good thing is when you press fitting like that is, um, I like to put a little tiny bit of oil on the shaft to make sure it slips in so it actually doesn't grab and, and tear at the material. So, and, and look, you heard, probably heard on camera, I gave it a couple of really good whacks and it went home, not a problem at all, okay? So look, I'm happy with that. I hope the young fella's happy with that and he can get back to his motorcycle racing. I'm not sure what motorbike it is off. I'm not sure if it's one of those, uh, uh, you know, fake, you know, uh, what are they calling them? Yeah, those um, Chinese import motocross bikes or it's a Honda or a Yamaha. I'm not, not sure at all, okay? But you can see the, the anodizing's definitely lost a little bit of its color, okay? Because I got it that hot, hopefully it will come back. It's sort of gone to a, um, a maroon color instead of black. And uh, yeah, it stunk the oven out and uh, she caught me by the way. It, I went in to grab the part. She's home with the grandkids babysitting and I got busted. So uh, I'm going to cop it later on. Hey, thanks for joining in guys. I'll see you next time on the Aaron Engineering Channel. Please join me in my next video when I open up a special parcel that's been sent to me all the way from the USA by my good buddy Paul Frank. And I believe it's a 5C collet chuck for the Colchester lathe. So uh, we'll be unboxing that in the next video. In the next video also, I'll be showing the kind work that's been done by two of my subscribers, uh, and they drew Maddie's jack stand, his machinist jack stand for me, in CAD and provided 2D drawings. So they, those people are Dwayne, and Dwayne's from Instagram. He's called Sharp Stuff Australia. He, he's an amateur knife maker. And the other subscriber is Stephen Brown from the USA also, and... Uh, so thank you guys, I really appreciate you doing those drawings for me in CAD and uh, in the next video I'll share that with the viewers also. Okay, we'll see you next time guys, bye bye.